Okay. So here's one. You know, I'm a little weird, but I find this one kind of fun. And I think part of it is just the initial sticker shock of looking at it going, dear God, what do they want? So I have sign of thing plus thing. So at the root of this, this is looking like angle plus angle, two different angles. So just the formulas we've been using. So I'm going to go ahead and label these as angles. So this one's alpha and this one's beta. So this tells us that the cosine of alpha is one half. So this is setting us up with a triangle where, and let's put our alpha in there, the cosine is one over two. So two squared is four minus one squared is three squared is three. So it turns out this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Meh. I don't actually care what the angle is. I just care what the sine and cosine of it are. So I have my cosine alpha is one half. So I'm just going to add here my sine alpha is squared of three over two. All right, now our beta here. The sine of beta is three fifths. So setting up a different triangle, but this is our beta angle. Opposite will be three, hypotenuse will be five. So three and five, like me internally, it's like, yes, because this is a Pythagorean triple. So it's three, four, five. So 25 minus 9 is 16, square 16 is 4. So our cosine of beta that we're going to make use of here in a second is going to be 4 fifths. All right. So now I just got to fill out my sine of alpha plus beta, write that formula down, and then fill in what I have over here on the right. All right, so... Sine of alpha plus beta is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Sine stays, so this is a plus. Alphas and betas. All right, so since I'm on that pen, I'll grab the betas. Cosine of beta is 4 fifths. Sine of beta is 3 fifths. Alpha, sine of alpha is square root 3 over 2. Cosine of alpha is 1 half. All right, so this one will be a little bit different because we're going to have over 10. But notice, because we pull a thing from each triangle, we get over the same denominator. So this is 4 square roots of 3 over 10 plus 3 over 10 equals the very weird looking 4 square roots of 3 plus 3 all over 10. Now 4 root 3 and the number 3 are not like terms. So that is all we can do with that. That is equal to, of course, some ugly number. But if I just wanted the ugly decimal number, I could pull it up using the calculator, using what I originally had. But this is the mathematically pretty answer. So I think this is kind of fun because I get to draw two triangles and figure them out. And then it's like putting puzzle pieces together. So it's kind of satisfying at the end. Is it useful? No, not really. But it's a little bit fun. All right, then we have our tangent formulas. I do not remember these. <laughs> I always have to look to do these because that is how often I've used these formulas. I don't even remember if my pre-cal teacher even taught these. All right, so the exact value of tangent of A plus B. So 
Let's just go ahead. We're going to have to figure out the tangent of pi over 6 and the tangent of pi over 4. Let's just go ahead and do that now. All right. So tangent of pi over 6 is the sine of pi over 6 over the cosine of pi over 6. All right, pi over 6 is, of course, our 30-degree angle. So this is long side, short side. So the cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine is the 1 half. So 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. So 1 over the square root of 3. Which, if we rationalize times root 3 over root 3, we would get root 3 over 3. So there's our tangent of pi over 6. Now tangent of pi over 4, that's our good buddy because sine and cosine are equal. Sine and cosine are both square root of 2 over 2, so the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Sweet. All right, so we got our plus. So the tangent of alpha plus beta, it's plus on top, minus on the bottom. So the... All right, so the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta all over 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. All right, so everywhere there's an alpha, we can go right pi over 6. Everywhere there's beta, I'm going to go right pi over 4. All right, now we're actually going to fill these in. So the tangent of pi over 6 was square root of 3 over 3. So on the bottom, that'll be like this for the moment. Plus oy, 1 and times 1 down here. All right. Boy, ain't this weird. All right. So I see little fraction on the top, little fraction on the bottom. I don't like seeing little fractions in a big fraction. So what I do is multiply to cancel the denominators. My denominators here are 3, so I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. Now this is going to distribute through the top and distribute through the bottom. So this will be the square root of 3 plus 3 over 3 minus the square root of 3. This might get simpler, but that is enough to answer the question. It's no longer got square roots all over the place. We could rationalize. When you rationalize something like this, and I'm only covering it because on occasion you have to do like problems in Cal where you have to rationalize this crap. So in order to rationalize this, we would multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. Because this is a square root with a plus or a minus outside of it and another term with it. So we can't just multiply by the same thing because this is going to create a FOIL situation for the multiplication, which is why I was hesitant to do it because I was like, I don't want to do the two FOILs. It's ugly. But it's good practice. All right, so on the bottom, we're multiplying by the conjugate so we get that difference of squares interaction. So our front times our front is going to be 9. The outside will be 3 roots of 3. And the inside will be negative 3 roots of 3. So I'll go ahead and write it. And then minus square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. All right, now on top, 
they're kind of backwards from each other, but I'll just go ahead and just foil. So three root three. Outer is root three times root three, so that'll just be three. Inner is three times three, so that'll be nine. And last is plus three root three. So this is six square roots of three plus 12 over nine minus three is six. So this ends up equaling the square root of three plus two. So sometimes weird stuff happens and we get some nice cancellation is that worth the effort of going through? Hmm. Is it too much silly, tedious work? Yes. So, I do not expect you guys to go through all of that. I am just not 100% sure web work won't get pissy and make you go there. But there's no real way to jump from what we had in purple over to that answer, unless you have the fancy calculator. I'm pretty sure the fancy calculator, if you type it incorrectly, I'm not 100% sure it'll rationalize when there's a conjugate, but it might. All right, so same song, second verse. So tangent of a plus. Tangent of A plus tangent of B. So, tangent of 2 pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 4 over 1 minus tangent 2 pi over 3 times tangent pi over 4. All right, 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2. Sine is positive in quadrant 2, so the tangent will be negative there. All right, let's kind of consider. There's 2 pi over 3, 60 degree reference angle, so short, negative 1 half, long, square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. All right, so I have negative square root of 3 plus, we just did tangent of pi over 4. That's our good friend where sine and cosine are the same. So it's 1 over 1 minus the negative square root of 3 times 1. So that is 1 minus the square root of 3 over 1 plus the square root of 3. And again, we can rationalize this. It's not necessarily worth the effort, but just in case. So the bottom. It's designed for the inside and the outside multiplication to cancel. So we're going to get 1 minus 3 squared. So the first times the last. On top, we got to write all four, though. So 1 minus the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 plus 3. So that is 4 minus 2 square roots of 3 over negative 2, which is negative 2 plus the square root of 3. So kind of similar to the one we had before. But still kind of ugly. All right. I'm going to split one more video. This one's a little long. 